Here we have an LR circuit. It's called an LR circuit because, well, you have an inductor, which has the symbol L, and a resistor, which has the symbol R. Now, if we're going to analyze the voltage drops as this circuit goes along. So we've got, for example, the voltage of the power supply, and then we get a drop from the inductor, and then a drop from the resistor, and that should all come out to zero. It's really a statement of conservation of energy, if you think about it. Now, let's close the switch, and let's look down here now at the graph, and we're going to graph on the x-axis, this is basically the path as you go around the circuit, and on the y-axis, the voltage. And we're going to start right here on the negative side of the power supply, which will set to zero on this graph. So if you look at it, well, the power supply is going to bring it up to some voltage V. And we're going to consider wires as zero resistance, so that goes along with no loss in voltage. And then here it comes to the inductor. So in the inductor, there's a voltage drop. Wire, and then here we have the resistor, and we get the remaining voltage drop. And I know that this has to come to zero because we started at zero, and this is the path as you go around the loop, and we're right back where we started. Now let's plug in what these voltages are, and we get V, minus L di dt minus ir equals zero. And one thing to notice, very important, is that the voltage drop for the inductor is proportional to the rate of change of current. And that's why it's called a choke. Because as the switch is closed here, you get an immediate current. It jumps from nothing to something, and therefore the rate of change is also huge and cancels out the voltage here. And so you start off with actually zero current for that first instant, even though you close the switch. Uh, more on that in a minute. Let's go to the next slide where we can do a little bit of math. Okay, so remember from the previous slide we have this. We're going to now solve for the current as a function of time. So first let's rearrange a few things, and when we do that we get dt L over V minus IR di. Now note that the variable that we're integrating over is in the denominator. And to solve this problem, you'll have to do some substitution, um, and I'll leave that for you to do at home. But basically we want to integrate from some zero time to some time T, and from the initial zero current to some current I, where this is understood to be I of T. And you'll, because the variable is in the denominator, you'll get log function out, and then when you solve for the answer, you take both to the E, so you end up getting on this side an exponential. And here's the result, I equals I naught, one minus E, the minus t over the time constant tau. So let me just uh, clean up just a tiny bit, get rid of that. So here's our, our main result, if you like, or the result from this integral. Some things to notice. Well, first of all, this time constant is equal to L over R. So as L increases, the current I changes more slowly. And of course, the converse, as L decreases, that is, as the inductance gets lower, then the current is allowed to change more quickly. One other thing is, well, because it's on the opposite side of the fraction, as R increases, as the resistance increases, I must change more quickly. That's what the math tells us, and that's pretty interesting. The reason is, is that R reduces the amount of current flow. So there's less of a change and therefore less of a rate of change here and therefore less of a voltage drop from the inductor. So it actually does make sense. Here as a function of time. So here's the circuit with the uh, switch closed and let's plot a couple different graphs. Well, 
for a small inductor, current is allowed to change more quickly, and therefore we might get a graph like this. So this is L small. Well, if the inductance is large, then we'll get a slower increase to the asymptote, and it might look like this, where this asymptote here is I max. Well, the reason why you get a slower change with a larger inductance is because, well, it chokes out any changes in current. And that's why people call this guy a choke in electrical engineering. Finally, what is I max? Well, when the current stops changing, so I stops changing, that means that the voltage drop across the inductor is zero, and therefore, you guys understand why it's zero, right? Because it's di dt, and so if it's not changing, then di dt is zero. Well, therefore, you get this equation, V equals IR, with the, you know, the, the voltage here is zero, so this is all that's left, and so you can see that I is then the voltage over R. All right, well, there's your LR circuit and a little bit about inductors.